Hello and welcome to the Kathleen Lynn Lecture Theatre in the Health Sciences Centre in UCD. My name is Suzanne Donnelly. I'm the Associate Dean for Programmes in Education Innovation in the School of Medicine, and I'm also Programme Director for the Medicine Programmes. I'm also a consultant rheumatologist with the rheumatology team in the Mater Hospital. Today, it gives me great pleasure to talk to those of you who are even remotely thinking about doing medicine, about our medicine programmes, and a little bit about medicine in general. I hope by the end of this short talk that you'll be able to answer the question, why is medicine for me? And why is medicine at UCD for me? If you're thinking about a career in medicine, you may have been inspired by one of the many doctors that are involved in media at present, or you may have been inspired by a doctor you know or who cared for you. What is important to know is that there are very many reasons to choose medicine as a career. Medicine is a degree with a huge number of different career opportunities after you graduate. You can work with people, you can work with high-tech images, you can work in a laboratory, and you can work even in the media. Medicine is a career that you can pursue anywhere and you can travel while you learn and train. Perhaps you like the idea of medicine because the core values of medicine, caring for others, improving people's lives, empathy, compassion, resonate with your own. Maybe you like the idea of a career that challenges you intellectually and one that will continue to challenge you for the whole of your career. And no matter what you do in medicine, if you choose to do medicine, you will have a career where you can make a difference every single day you go to work. Very briefly, for those who perhaps um, haven't thought about medicine before or who know absolutely nothing about applying to medicine, I just want to let you know where you can get information. The main portal of uh, information is, of course, the CAO website, and you'll see in there there's a specific tab for undergraduate entry to medicine in 2022. And you can download a really helpful booklet that gives you all of the information that you need to know. In that booklet, it will tell you uh, the minimum subject requirements for each of the medicine programs, and here you can see those for UCD. And it also gives you the important dates, noting that the CAO applications have already opened and close on the 1st of February. You should also note that if you want to do medicine, there is another component to entry, which is the HPAT test. This uh, somewhat confusing diagram is taken from uh, the CAO guide. And really what it shows you is that entry to medicine is determined by a combination of leaving cert scores and HPAT score. Last year was an unusual year for all college degree programs and the medicine entry points across the board were extremely high. I've chosen to illustrate the sorts of combinations that you would need to get into medicine using the points from the previous year, which were total combined points of 736. You can see here that any combination of leaving cert plus HPAT that falls underneath this stepwise line will be sufficient. As you can see, with the lower range leaving cert scores, you need a higher HPAT score. On the other side of things, with a very high and indeed perfect leaving cert score, you can have a much lower HPAT score and still have the appropriate points for medicine. You can see there the points for last year were extremely high, but it is expected that these will correct again in the coming year. Information about HPAT Ireland for anyone who is unaware of it can be uh, found on the HPAT Ireland website and the web address is there. And just to note that there is a cost for the HPAT test and the test will be delivered online according to their website for next year. Again, they have a lovely little booklet an information booklet for 2021 and that includes all of the dates and the costs. UCD itself publishes lots of really helpful information. And you can see here, if you go into the admissions website, there's lots of questions that you can click on. And these three links, which will be available, show you um, 
uh, important information generally about UCD applications. Specifically, if you're someone who's listening today who doesn't have a history of family or friends doing medicine or becoming doctors, or even if you don't have a history of your family, friends, or, or uh, those around you going to college, you may consider yourself a trailblazer. And if you're a trailblazer, UCD welcomes you. UCD supports equity of access to higher education through a variety of routes. And you will see that the HEAR and DARE program in UCD has an application information evening on the 1st of December at seven o'clock. We have places via the HEAR and DARE routes for medicine in UCD. And I would strongly encourage anyone who's eligible for those to apply to come study with us. So why UCD medicine? Well, I have three very good reasons why you should choose UCD medicine. They are our places, our people, and our programs. And I'm going to start with our people. Let me introduce you to the people that you will meet as a UCD medicine student. Here you see a picture of the transition to clinical education, the white coat ceremony, which marks the end of the Belfield Days training and the start of your training in hospitals and general practice sites as a student doctor. In UCD Medicine, we have almost 1,000 faculty supporting your teaching. We have 1,500 additional tutors and teachers who teach things like clinical skills, problem-based learning. We have a big input of technical and administrative staff, and we have a large pool of world-class researchers. Here, you will see some of our faculty at the front of the procession here. Uh, in the large picture is our Dean, Professor Michael Keane. And at the back, uh, you might recognize the Associate Dean. Also in these pictures are some of our decorated um, teachers and trainers engaged in various uh, teaching and teaching related pursuits in the school. I'm absolutely delighted to share with you that we have star teachers within UCD School of Medicine. We have two of our um, uh, faculty from last year were awarded uh, President's Awards for University Teaching Excellence. And at the bottom here, we have an International Teaching Award winner, Dr. Tom Flanagan, who won the prestigious Universitas 21 Health Sciences Teaching Excellence Award, which was only given to two teachers in medical schools internationally. You can see here, when you have a look at the neuro escape room, this was one of Dr. Flanagan's um, teaching innovations for COVID when he was teaching neuroanatomy, which is notoriously difficult online. And he came up with the concept of a neuro escape room to help his students learn all about neuroanatomy and how uh, the connections between the brain and the body work. In addition, our faculty are hugely research active. So when you come to UCD, you're not just taught by brilliant teachers, you're taught by faculty who are at the forefront of tomorrow's medicine. And that really means the people who are doing the medicine research that determine the types of treatments and operations that our patients get tomorrow. You can see here some very recent publications from our faculty, um, some in the uh, very important field of COVID-19 and particular, particularly treatment of the sickest patients of COVID-19 in hospitals. And we also have some uh, images taken from our Center for Precision Surgery, led by Professor Ronan Cahill, who is our Professor of Surgery in the Mater Hospital, and a pioneer in digital imaging um, in uh, cancer surgery. Most importantly, of course, let me introduce you to our students. And here we have your potential UCD compatriots and fellow students, again, engaged in lots of the types of pursuits um, that we encourage um, and that we deliver as part of the UCD Medicine course. Down in the bottom right and at the bottom left, you can see students post-graduation and post-white coat ceremony. And I think it's important to note that in medicine, um, not everything is about study and learning and facts and research. There's also plenty of time for socializing. And in that, our UCD Student Medical Society is really a leader in the university in developing a sense of community for all of our medical students and providing a sense of um, peer support for all of our new students as they come in. 
The MedSoc also manages to run events even during a pandemic and keeps, anyone, uh, keeps everyone entertained, um, as I say, even uh, when it's difficult to do so. Now I want to switch a little bit and tell you that you should also come to UCD because of our places. If you haven't been on campus, I highly recommend this um, 360 degree tour that's available on the website. And shown here, you can see our absolutely state-of-the-art student center and part of the inside of the student center alongside the swimming pool, um, both of which are extraordinary uh, facilities and available directly opposite the Health Sciences Center where the School of Medicine is based. Our Health Sciences Center itself is a state-of-the-art facility. And really we became probably most acutely aware of this this year because we were able to welcome all of our students back on campus at the start of September because of the nature of the modern purpose-built facilities and state-of-the-art facilities that we had here. And really that was a source of great joy for everyone involved, staff and students alike. We have modern libraries, seminar rooms, an anatomy dissection lab, and plenty of social and common areas for our students. But of course, this is a medical school. And one of the highlights of the UCD medicine experience is the fact that our two major training sites are two of Dublin's best um, and most well-known acute hospitals. The Mater Misericordia University Hospital in Dublin, where I'm myself based as a consultant rheumatologist, and St. Vincent's University Hospital just down the road from the campus here in Belfield. We are absolutely proud of our uh, long and strong traditions of education, all across um, education from the start of your clinical training all the way through uh, to your postgraduate training and indeed um, support for you um, in, in uh, continuing professional development activities as, an, as a doctor. Our clinical training network also uh, comprises 25 acute general and specialist hospitals so that you will not only see acute and general medicine in both acute settings and in primary care, but you'll also get to uh, see specialist medical care delivered in specialist centres like the National Maternity Hospital in Hollis Street, the National Orthopaedic Hospital in Kappa, the Heart and Lung Transplant Centre in the Mater, the Liver Transplant Centre in St Vincent's, and the National Trauma Centre, which is currently being established in the Mater Hospital. We also have more than 150 primary care centres, and these are located across the country um, in both rural and urban locations, so that if you want to be a general practitioner, you can experience both types of general practice in our training network. And in our sites, we again have wonderful student facilities, and here you'll see some of the lovely facilities we have available for students. In the top, we have the Student Centre in St. Vincent's, and on the, the bottom right, we have the, uh, the famous uh, blue table ten tennis room in the Student Centre in the Mater. You will see also our purpose-built um, Surgical Skills Centre, which is a sk Surgical Skills and Simulation Centre in the Pillar Education Centre in the Mater. Uh, and again, you can see uh, smiling here in the center of this is our Professor of Surgery, Professor Ronan Cahill. And lastly, our programs. So our program structure is designed to lead you through uh, the knowledge, the skills, uh, and the competencies that you will need as a doctor from the very first stage of your education here with us in year one, to the very last stage at the end of year six and what we call phase five. The first phase of your education covers basic science and an introduction to medicine. And then for the next two and a half years, you will spend time learning the biomedical sciences, population health, the social and behavioral sciences that are important for the practice of medicine. And you will have early patient contact and come to learn the patient perspective working with patient educators from our patient educator program developed here in Belfield. The second half of stage four will then be your transition to clinical learning. And this is a, 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 a six month uh, phase where we take you through learning the basic skills required 
to learn on clinical sites. We introduce you to uh, clinical sites that are not so acute. And then we bring you to our two major sites, the Mater um, and St. Vincent's, where you will become um, proper clinical medical students attached to teams, and you will start to learn from patients um, and from other doctors working in these hospitals. The next year and a half, four year and three quarters is our immersive clinical learning phase. And again, that covers specialties and is also based in the acute hospitals and in general practices across the country. And just before you qualify, we give you 10 weeks of professional completion and preparedness for practice to make sure that you are ready to start working as a doctor as soon as you complete our program. Through this, we integrate four big themes. And these are themes that will ensure that you stay current and that you have all of the skills to stay current for the duration of your medical career. We teach about evidence-based medicine and research. We make sure that you have the clinical competencies and are prepared for practice. We teach you about the professional practice of medicine, the professional side of being a doctor. And we teach you about healthcare systems, about healthcare quality and patient safety, all of which will be important to the end of your days of practice as a doctor. And just a few little details about each of these. I myself am module coordinator for Doctors, Patients and Healthcare, which is a first year module. And this is in the basic science and introduction phase. And here you can see some slides from our student group projects where our students take their first steps as thinking like doctors, and they go behind the headlines in a story of medical interest reported in the press or in the media. And they go behind those to look at the actual research and to look at the way in which medicine is reported to the public and to comment on whether or not they think it is usefully or perhaps not usefully communicated. In the next phase, which is biomedical sciences, population health, social behavioral sciences, early patient contact, there are very many activities in the broad subjects of anatomy and physiology. These are really the normal structure and function of the human body. And then moving on towards the end of that phase, when we start to think about the diseased human body, microbiology, pathology, and pharmacology, the study of treatment of disease, alongside biostatistics, which are important for the understanding of all of the new research that comes out in medicine, and early patient contact, for which you can see here, we have a bespoke guide called Learning with Patients to guide you through that. The next phase is the transition to clinical learning. And in the transition to clinical learning, you will undertake modules that are designed specifically to give you the clinical skills of taking a history and performing a physical examination so that you can move out into the major sites and learn from and with patients. You will also have modules in diagnosis and therapeutics and general practice and professionalism. Again, we have a bespoke UCD guide to learning on clinical sites that guides you through all of the potential pitfalls and makes life easier for you and more productive and perhaps enjoyable as a clinical student. And then when you've navigated your transition, you are into immersive clinical learning. And this is the stuff that happens on the major hospital sites, that happens in the specialty hospital sites. So for example, pediatrics, obstetrics, psychiatry, and also in the community in the general practice network. Of course, no clinical education would be complete without an understanding of forensic and legal aspects of medical practice. And as the pandemic has shown us, public health is of the utmost importance in the health of populations. And these modules are also delivered during your clinical curriculum. And finally, professional completion and preparedness for practice. This includes a three or four week period where you shadow interns who are working as doctors for a period prior to your qualification. So you actually um, spend full days and on call shifts with those doctors who are working at the front lines 
in preparation for taking on those roles yourself when you qualify in July. In addition, uh, UCD offers the prescri prescribing safety assessment, which is an international prescribing test. And uh, when you qualify in that, that gives you a passport to prescribe uh, and helps you work abroad in uh, many jurisdictions, including particularly the UK. You will also get a, a, a BLS certificate, so basic life support for health professionals. And should you choose to, you can enter the UCD intern training network and continue to train even when you're working as an intern and junior doctor uh, with your comrades in UCD medicine. Lastly, I just want to mention some of the highlights of this journey. We have a really active student summer research program. This is particularly um, helpful and of interest to those students who are interested in research and who may see research as something they want to do in their medical careers. Um, it's a supervised eight week project. It could be in laboratory medicine, clinical medicine, or in medical education. And students get involved with the school's researchers in their laboratories or research centers. And in 2021, we introduced a new COVID-19 research module so that we actually had medical students from UCD contributing to the global knowledge about COVID as it was happening um, over last year and this year. And that's something again, that we will continue. For those who like to travel, UCD has an extensive network of alumni and our alumni look after our students and invite them to come and do international electives. The, the school has a number of bursaries to support students traveling. And as you can see here from the list, these are uh, not all of the electives available, but of course also students can choose their own elective. And there is a, a period in the curriculum during the clinical uh, curriculum in the last two years or you can do up to six weeks study abroad and count it towards your degree from UCD. And lastly, but very importantly, I think we're all aware that we've been through challenging times. The practice of medicine and the study of medicine is challenging as are very many other aspects of life. And UCD has a very, very strong culture of supporting its students. We have a big team that supports students. We have specifically trained student advisors. We have peer mentors who are fellow students from the year above. We have academic mentors who may be people like myself who guide students who are in need of help and assistance. We have a big on-site program team to support with the basic queries, things like registration to modules. We have clinical site teams. So each of the clinical sites has their own UCD person who's there perhaps just for a cup of tea, but also um, to help with any major issues that may arrive, arise. And we have a very active international office that supports our international students. And of course, we're part of a big university and UCD itself provides superb uh, support for students through the student union and its societies and also through student health. So that brings me to my Whistletops tour, tour through UCD medicine. I hope what you've heard has been helpful. I hope it will encourage you to apply to UCD medicine. I hope it will encourage you to apply to medicine anywhere. I wish you all the very best of luck in your leaving cert and in your HPAD. And we hope to see you here in this lecture theater in September, 2022. Thank you.